Hello, and welcome to the Sunday Meditation at the Light Institute of Galisteo and the Sanctuary of Light. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we divide our meditation into three parts. In the first part, we ask our Divine Higher Self to take a form for us, any form, so that we can align to that form through our consciousness. Then we draw the Higher Self into our body and we sit in meditation as our Higher Selves. I'll make a little OM sound so that you can push the button when I'm done with that part and sit in meditation for as long as you'd like. In the second part, we imagine that we're reaching up into the cosmos and pulling down a beautiful beam of pure white light down through the top of your head, down into your stomach, your solar plexus. This is the center of the emotional body. And from there, we laser that white light out through our auric fields, out across the planet and back up into the cosmos. And we just keep doing that with our breath, breathing in, drawing it down, exhaling through our mouth, and lasering it out across the planet. That will take you into a lovely state of meditation. Another OM sound, push the button. And in the third part, each time someone will suggest what we might take our, our wonderful meditation frequencies and extend them out into the world. And this week, that extension is about pets. Because there have been so many pets that have, well, that always uh, comfort us, protect us, uh, suffer with us, and have been left behind uh, right now on the planet. And pets are truly a great gift to each and every person who has one. Whether it's a snake or a dog or a bird, whatever it is, uh, it, it en enlightens our sense of self as a loving being, as a caring being. And so we want to send frequencies of light to all the pets on the planet, that they may be healthy and they might be cared for and loved. If you're ready, we'll begin with a little breathing first. By breathing in through your nose, hold at the top, and then exhale slowly, slowly through your mouth like this. That slows your brain into a meditative state. Here we go. Breathe in through your nose. Hold at the top. And now exhale very slowly, slowing your brain into meditation. Once again, breathe in through your nose. Hold. Exhale through your mouth. your higher self. It's the intuitive essence of your soul. It's your own inner voice. Ask it to take a form for you for this meditation. It could be a rainbow. It could be a horizon, a being, a light, a tree, an animal, an equation. Ask your higher self to take form and take the first form that comes to you, even if you don't understand it. And now, ask your higher self to show you that point in your body that holds your sacred, divine essence at this moment. And imagine the touch, as if your higher self is touching your body in some places holding your divine essence. Focus on that touch. Begin to breathe in and out as if you're creating an opening through that point of divine essence. And now draw your higher self in through that point. Feel as if it's coming into your body and that every cell in your body begins to vibrate with the energy of your higher self. Um. 
reach up into the cosmos and pull down a beautiful beam of pure white light right down through the top of your head. Feel that beam flowing through your brain, down into your stomach, your solar plexus, and from there, laser it out through your auric field, across the planet, and back up into the cosmos. Breathe in, draw the white light down. Exhale, laser it out across the planet and back into the sky. And just continue to do that. Breathing in and out, pulling the light institute vibration and the higher white light down through the top of your head, lasering it out. Deepening your meditation. And now, oh. imagine all of the pets around the world, beloved of humans, caring for humans, creating that wonderful unconditional love relationship that teaches us so much. Draw them all into your mind's eye. And now ask all the pets across the planet what frequency of light they need to be protected now and cared for and safe so that they can help us in all the ways that they do. Take the first color that comes into your mind that the pets show to you. See what it is. And reach up into the cosmos and pull exactly that color down through the top of your head, down into your solar plexus, and from there laser that color, that frequency of light, out to all the pets that you're holding in your mind's eye. Some of them might be your own. So continue drawing that color down and lasering it out to the pets, a frequency of light that they've asked for from you to protect them now so that they can teach us unconditional love, comfort us, and share our lives. Take a deep breath into your body and open your eyes. Thank you. I know that I know that everywhere in the world we love our pets and we want to help all those pets who have perhaps lost their owners, lost their human friends, and this is a way to do it. We have a second part to this meditation. It's called knowings. And from around the world, each week, people send questions that they would like for us to focus upon in order to uplift us and illuminate our consciousness and all those who are joining us. And Allison will tell us the questions that have come today. Allison? The first question is from Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts, in the USA. Hi, Chris. Your voice is so powerful, <laughs> yet gentle and free of judgment that it makes it easier to grasp your teachings. Mm. Will you shed some light on how to have a voice like yours that creates a space for illumination and does not threaten? And does not threaten. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. And it's no secret and everyone can have that voice, their own voice, your own voice, but your own voice filled with that kind of compassion and happiness uh, that will inspire and include everyone else. And you know, what we say at the Light Institute is that the voice really comes from the, the energies of the heart, where from the knowing of the third eye, the, the knowing and the heart come together in your throat. And so it's this voice box uh, that, that extends out uh, an energy that says, I like you, 
And I think that's the secret, is that my voice carries with it. I, I actually not only like you, but I can know you. And so with that energy, uh, it, brings, it brings a kind of uh, and com com communication that says everything is fine and we can move together. We've come together on this planet as, as a soul family and we can know each other and we can extend that out through our voice. So what I would say, mine being a little raspy this morning for all the good, wonderful goodies <laughs> that I have eaten through. We have Thanksgiving this weekend. Uh, giving thanks into the world uh, in the United States. And so this voice box is what is going to carry uh, your happiness and your message that says, I like you. Because if people feel an energy coming from your voice that embraces them, that doesn't judge them, then it will support them and they will play it back and play it on. So let's just do a quick exercise right now. You could even place your hands very lightly right here on your throat, <clears throat> your voice box, and close your eyes now and ask your voice box, your vo the, the source that creates the sound of your voice, what frequency of light it needs to Extend a vibration, a sound, a sound of caring, a sound of happiness, a sound of inclusion. Just see what color your own voice box asks for at this moment. And whatever that is, just imagine that you're sucking that color right into your throat, right into your voice box. If you're putting your hands here, feel that that color is coming directly in through your fingers and it's washing away any congestion. It's clearing, it's opening your voice. And then it's filling it with the goodness of your heart because your heart is good. Feel that and feel the wisdom. Wisdom will always uh, bring with it compassion and an inclusion. So feel these energies coming together at your voice box now. The color. And feel it entering there. And creating that vibration that when you speak will be carried through sound. And open your eyes. And this is something that would be wonderful for you to do anytime you're going to talk to someone, anytime you're going out, is just to command, really, your voice box to carry the goodness of your heart and the wisdom of your higher self into this world. Thank you. Allison? The second question is from Cairo, Egypt. Chris Griscom, can you teach the way to not be black and white, polarized in consciousness, to see things from all ways for acceptance of others? Hmm. You know, the easiest way to accept others is to, in a way, see what's, what's the same as you. And there's a Native American expression that says, when you have walked one mile, in my moccasins, you will know me. And what that meant was, try to, try to, to know me. Put your attention out there and see what my life is like. And one of the things that my higher self has always taught me is to look at each person, each group, whether it's a religion or a, a political situation or a race or whatever it is, and, and find, through the power of my choice, Find how we are the same. For example, all humans want their children to come into a better world. We want them to not only be successful, but to be safe, to be happy. And it is beautiful to see in this world today how young people and children want to play with each other, want to know each other, find it fascinating. 
cultural aspects that are different than their own, but that, that they could love. And so what uh, I practice is to always um, um, try to find out as much as I can about somebody else or a group, another group, and to specifically look for um, what is something that we share. Doesn't matter what religion we have. We have uh, perpetrated enough violence and death on this planet over my God against your God. That has to stop. And instead, look at the teachings in all religions, in every culture, in every community that is saying, live a life that includes the others for the good of the whole. And if we do that, it's easy to find that even in our religions, even in what you think is the opposite of you, it's not the opposite of you. There is the same as you. Find the same and you will be uh, be able to do that. And the last thing that I would say is, when in our consciousness we cannot find that inclusion, we cannot find that recognition of someone else, it's really because we are afraid. We humans are afraid of each other. We're afraid that our differences uh, could cause us suffering. And that's why it's so important to find our likeness. But Let's do a quick exercise about that because I know that that is the central core. And then we justify it. We say because of our different religions, because of our different races, because of our different cultures, because, because, um, I don't like you instead of the truth, which is I'm afraid of you. And if we could clear away our fear of each other, we would see things in each other that inspire us, that embrace us, that that really bring us together. Close your eyes. Ask your body first to show you another group, uh, another religion, another something that is different than you, that creates that sense of polarity. And I'm sure there are many if you really think about it. Just bring any of those into your mind's eye now so that you recognize them. And then look deeply and what is it that frightens you about them? Probably it's that you fear that they don't like you and therefore might harm you in some way or take from you something you have. There's so many layers of fear and that sit in our mind and in our hearts. Now ask your body where it holds the fear of that group, those others. The body never lies, it knows. Imagine, you could see a place in your body or hear a place or feel a place in your body that is holding this deep, deep fear that you may never even have considered that you have. Let your body speak. Where is it? Now bring your conscious awareness into that place, wherever it is, and ask your body what color it needs, because color is the most powerful energy. It creates everything that has form. What color does it need to wash away that fear so that you could actually find the connectedness? Take that color, what color is it that your body shows you? And now suck it into that place that's holding the fear. It could be your whole body, it could be several places, but dr drink that color into your body and allow that frequency of light to wash away this underlying fear. Just continue to draw that light in and wash away that fear. That's it. Just a little bit more. And open your eyes. And now imagine that you have washed away a fear and therefore you can effortlessly reach out and embrace and come to know others so that the them and us dissolves away for you and it's just us 
on this planet. This is what is true. Allison? The last question is from Ulan Bator, Mongolia. Mongolia. I love Mongolia. I love you. Yes? To Chris Griscom, what is your favorite way to meditate? <laughs> oh, my, there's, I must say, there's so many ways to meditate that it would be hard for me to say this way or that way because I do many different ways. But the, the bottom line here is that my higher self taught me years ago, listen to this, meditation is life and life is meditation. So that's what you hold in your consciousness. And so I taught myself to, to program that. Maybe I'm doing some mundane task and I will say, I am meditating. Now, uh, this Pavlovian idea, I, I train myself to click my fingers and say, I am meditating. But I can just think it in my mind as well. But I am meditating, but if I do that, I can feel my brain actually slow down into alpha, sometimes even into theta, moving into a meditative state. And you know, when you do that, everything in life becomes easy. It becomes more pleasurable. If you have to do something you don't want to do, bring meditation into it. I am meditating. What is meditation? Meditation is the linking up of consciousness. It's the linking up of everything with the divine source. And so when you feel that, the frustration or the resistance dissolves away and you just find yourself uh, magically without thinking, either performing a task or sitting. I love, if, if I had to answer that, I would say that in terms of life as meditation, uh, for me, nature is my source of meditation. I love to walk in nature, to sit in nature, to even look out my window. It was snowing two days ago, and I had the opportunity to walk in the snow barefoot. Because that, if you walk, if you put your bare feet on the ground and say, I am meditating, it will really, it will take out all negative energy. It will clean you in very profound ways. And so for me, I to consider that meditation is life. It's the way you live your life, that you are always open to the cosmos, always open to your higher selves, to your source energy. And life is meditation. Let us all meditate through life and be happy <laughs> and peaceful.